Gutters are thousands of years old and they're very useful, right? You want to keep rainwater and direct it in the way you want it to go. Super amazing. They're useful for a lot of things, but not containing cables, guys. What's wrong with you? So this solar install is only three and a half years old and it is just horrendous. It is honestly one of the worst solar installs I have ever seen. So our plan today is to rip it out and fit the brand new Tesla Powerwall Gen 3. Let's get into it. Three, four. Okay, so there's 13 panels on this system split over two aspects. So at the moment, they're using a solar edge system, which means basically every one of these panels will have an optimizer on them. The system that we're going to be using is the Tesla Powerwall, and because it has multiple MPPT inputs into it, we're going to be putting that on its own string and that on its own string. The first step is to take this thing apart and actually see how bad it really is. So. I've got my brand new tool, which I'm very excited to use. Joining me on the job today, we've got the main man himself, Chester Strong, rocking our brand new uniform from Essential Workwear. The link's down below. Okay, less of that. Right, blur, blur that. So if we take off the bottom row, and then we can kind of use the rail to stand up and do the next row, because what I want to do is take all of these off. We're going to check how the roofing work has actually been done, make sure there's no destroyed tiles, make sure there's not going to be any leaks, and also just repair all of the, all of the wiring. Oh, Man, that is so nice. Even that, that feels a bit bouncy. I mean, it's not hitting the tiles, so it might be all right, but we'll just, we'll just check. <laughs> These are filthy. This is quite tight, isn't it? Maybe it'll lift the other way. Oh, it's all cable tied up. Have you got some cutters on you? Uh, I've got a knife. I've got a knife. Ah! Oh, yeah. So after almost destroying his fingertips, we lifted up the panel to discover this optimizer that's just about hanging in there. Don't worry, buddy, we all are. I've never seen it attached like this before. It is literally just land into the rail. That is how it is attached. But anyway, we hope we can get them off really, very easily. Oh, oh, here we can. There was so much pigeon poo underneath these panels that actually got me wondering if maybe they've been installed by pigeons, which would make sense to think about it because it does look like they were winging it. That got me thinking about a worrying thought. Probably shouldn't have been dipping my fingers in that water earlier and then flexing my tea with it. I want to sell some of these fancy Ray-Ban filming glasses. I look like an absolute dork. Dorkness Maximus. I want to bully myself. But, please do. They've got cameras in them so I can film, look. I'm filming you right now. Okay, so we've got some help today from Evo Renewables. So my old friend Ben, as you might also know him. So while they are on the roof, finishing off those little last bits, taking the panels off and sorting out all the cabling. I'm going to start taking a look at this Tesla system. So this is actually my first time doing a power wall, especially this new one, but I've heard very good things. It's got rave reviews online. Okay, so there's another box. This right here is what we call the Tesla gateway. So this basically will interrupt the power from the, the grid supply in and then the power out into your home. So you've got obviously supply in and then your home there, the supply out. You've got the option for it to be three phase. We're only using single phase here because um, in the UK typically we mostly have single phase on domestic properties. I have to say my first impressions of this, right? Because I'm going to give an honest review. I'm not being paid. We have paid for this product full price. That doesn't feel that nice. Like we've just installed the Siege Energy one of these recently and I have to say that actually felt slightly better quality than this. But we won't judge yet. We'll get this installed and we'll see what we think. Little confession. In the making of this video right here, we may or may not have completely destroyed the microphones, which may have caused some audio issues. Now, if you can spot every time that we used an artificial intelligence to correct the audio, please comment it down below because it is for sure not perfect. So I'll tell you a bit about this and the reason why I, I think it is actually quite a special product with a lot of potential. So it's a 13 and a half kilowatt hour battery, 100% depth of discharge and it's got a configurable inverter. So that means you can have it as 3.6 kilowatt all the way up to 11 kilowatt of inversion all within one unit. You just adjust it and tell it what it is. So that's quite a cool little feature. But so this is going to be fitted just here behind this scaffold pole, which we're about to get moved. While we were freezing our cheeks off outside, let's go see Chester hard at work inside. Oh. 
Um, I haven't got anything good to say. So we're just removing all of the old gear. We've got the shoulder edge inverter, two DC isolators for the two strings, the AC isolator, and then the solar meter. And I assume with my limited knowledge that this will be to do with the optimizers. First thing first, let's check this puppy off. Cause I don't fancy doing live work today. But do we leave it at this with my trusty voltage indicator? No, let's prove this bad boy. Yeah, we've got voltage pop up there. Live neutral, nothing. Live earth, nothing. Neutral earth, nothing. And we prove one more time. Still good. Yeah, baby. Now I can stick my hands in there. Working four meters above Chester's head was me, all the way up on the roof. That right there, that is the fault of the lot. They could have literally spent two minutes more Found the fold in the felt, pushed it up, and uh, done this job properly. But no, you're going to save two minutes by just ramming it in there and then running it along. Look, running it up from the gutters. Should we follow it? Fun story. Just got back from Africa. Oh my gosh, my guts are so bad. But what's fantastic, right? I picked up a parasite. It is the next I'm telling you, it's free weight loss. I'm, I'm even considering, should I deal with the parasite or should I wait until I hit my target target weight first? Having had enough of turd polishing today, we decided that instead of tidying up all of those cables, we just want to rip them out, start again, replace them with the Doncaster Cables 4-core PV Ultra cable, which is made exactly what? for this scenario. That's a nice clean wall there. Could use this place for keeping the crockery, the cruise, the slow cooker. Yeah, the slow cooker, what a great space. Personally, at my place, I'm just making a cupboard on top of our fridge. It's not an integrated fridge, but I've got a lot of space just to store big old kitchen items up top. What do you do with your slow cooker? So while Chester was inside talking about kitchen utensils, we were outside ripping out the old cruddy cabling and moving and installing the new Tesla Powerwall Gen 3 battery. So you see this wall mount in bracket here, the actual power wall itself is supported on a floor, so we just got that bracket just to stop it rocking forward, but we've got to lift it up onto that bracket. Yeah. Yeah. Nice one. The battery's on, so when we come to wire that, I'll show you. Cha, cha. Okie cokey. We're going to disconnect this, and we're going to come with a tail pack down and up into car, and then we're coming out from here, back in to connect to the rest of the property. We've got, uh, it's a bit messy. They've kind of done all sorts. They played about, done a little bit of rewire and ran off again. No, they did this whole install in two hours. Wow. They must be very good. They're amazing. All right, so the Evo guys are up on the roof, smashing out the solar skirt and install. Chester is down and inside. I'm going to take the opportunity now to go to the wholesaler. I'll say another really annoying thing is that decent companies are getting outbid by companies like this one and customers are none the wiser. Some customers just see numbers on a page. And to be fair, some customers can't afford better. If you need a car and you can't afford a nicer car, then of course you have to have a car in today's society. So just buy the cheaper car, make it work. With solar, it is still somewhat of a luxury. If you can't afford to get it done properly, don't waste your money, just, just keep saving. Buy yourself a nice cruise, I don't know. Don't get one of these cheap, trashy international companies. And that's not me, by the way. Oh, time to have some lunch. And while I'm having my lunch, I'm going to be going through my inquiries. I have got everything from inquiries, quotes, invoices. I can assign jobs. I can assign materials I've just bought all on one platform from anywhere in the world, from my phone, laptop, iPad, you name it. That's because I use Tradeify. Now, if you'd like to try Tradeify, I've got an unbeatable offer in the description below. So go check that out. And thanks to Trade5 for sponsoring this video. Back on site, the most important job was still left to do. Just trying to clean up these panels because they are so filthy that honestly I'm not even convinced they're going to be generating very much. Like, it's amazing the losses you get. It was just a few leaves and a bit of dirt on these panels. And I think the biggest lie that was ever told is that panels are self cleaning. Like they might rinse off some of the worst of the dirt, but all this green lichen and algae and 
stuff that I'm scrubbing off. You're only gonna get that with a scrub. If you have a window cleaner with a reach and wash brush, that would do it. But this is a really nice customer. It's just such a poor standard install. And short of actually just starting everything from scratch again, there's not that much that you can do. You can just try and clean it up a little bit, try and just make it look a little bit nicer. But other than that, not much you can do. So yeah, doing our best. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna clean it, obviously. We've rewired it all. So all of this old cruddy wiring has been ripped out and thrown away. We've got the Doncaster cables pulled up here now. But I also wanna use this, flashing. So this is made by a company called Solar Skirt, and it's called Solar Skirt. So it wraps around the outside like this, and it stops birds from being able to go up there and make nests and pull apart all the wiring and poof over everything. So it literally just clamps on like that. Just looks much nicer, much more professional than the bird meshing stuff that you get. It's another way that we're gonna take this to the next level. If you wanna check out Solar Skirt, I'll leave the link in the description below. This works. I can't get up to that section of roof now. I should have cleaned these while we're down. Why didn't we clean these while we're down, Ben? Because people ignore me, that's why. This is working. A treat. So after giving the panels a good scrub and clean, they're gonna be so much more efficient. Look at that. That looks so much better. Now, as you pull up to the building, rather than it look like it's literally about to fall off the roof, we managed to secure it just a little bit better, tighten up all of the rails and uh, relay down the panels, rewire it, and then fit this lovely solar skirt around it. So let me show you the battery, how that's wired up. So on this side, we've got all of our AC connections. And on this side, we have all of our DC connections. So if you come close, I'll show you. Right here, coming out of this isolator, we have our Doncaster cable EV Ultra cable. Now the EV Ultra cable was originally made for EVs. It can run CTL network down the same cable as the power, but not just for EV chargers. This stuff is awesome for anything really where you want to transmit that network cable at the same time. So the DC side is just here. You see we've got the DC isolator, but you'll notice these connections here you have to crimp a fork crimp on and actually wire them on that way. So that's our two strings there, ready to go. Let me show you the gateway. Doing this in three phase would be horrendous because horrendous. you've got to fit a main switch. You got to have your supply come in, out and into there because you have to have a main switch here. And then you've got to come out into fusing there to the back into the property. And then you've got to have a separate RCBO there for your actual battery outside via your generation meter. Chester. Hello. I have a gift for you. For me? Oh, this is pretty, isn't it? Thanks, Unilite. I love Unilite. How do we do? Oh, molto oh. bene. What are the features? Well, adjustable. Hello. That's useful for all sorts, actually. Magnet, as per. Yas. They're just brilliant, aren't they? So well made. So, as you can tell, this is a building site at the minute. But we want to get this gateway commissioned. So, there are some heaven free Wi Fi set up up here on a uh, 4G router and a 4G SIM card. So canal, just so we can commission it, I'm gonna run it up through the site to here, plugged in. And then when he gets his proper Wi-Fi, we can just chop it and put it into a patch panel. We're gonna be terminating an RJ45 cable. Grab yourself an RJ45 plug. Put it in your mouth like so. Then strip back your, da your data cable. Cut out that inner plastic right there. With most net network connections, you don't really want to untwist the pairs unnecessarily. But I find in RJ45s, unless you're doing like keystones, you've got to untwist it. So I don't really, I cut them quite short anyway. So you've only got about three mil of untwisted pair. So these pairs are twisted up because it basically helps with the signal transmission. Find the color code that you're going for. In the UK for the B standard, we go white, orange, orange white green blue white blue green and then white brown brown and i find just pinch that color combination in give a little shuffle on a normal rj45 head you can put a little thing on them which holds them in place then you slide it in until they reach the end and click it these rj45s they're called pass-throughs some people don't like them because of their ability to let water in the end but in my opinion if you've got water coming anywhere near this plug, you've got bigger problems anyway than 
water tracing down the cable so for a scenario like this where it's going inside i don't mind it so white orange orange white green blue white blue green white brown brown right perfect so then we pass it through here and you'll see when we crimp it it also cuts those ends off for us that is how you do an rj45 connection with a pass-through connector i'm very ashamed right because usually i've got a much nicer tester when I'm doing, when I know I'm doing network, we've got a little ideal tester, which is lovely. But for now, we're going to use my little Powerland special. So what this does is it sends a signal down the cable, and it will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ground. And you want to make sure that on both the send and the remote, on the master and the remote, they both do the same thing. So what we'll do is we'll plug the remote in over here. Now we take this end of our tester, plug it in, switch it on. We should see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in that order. There we go. If any of these cables were cropped, you'd see it jump numbers, you'd see it jump around and not make sense. So that's all good. That's ready to plug in. Now that is not an industry standard network test. That is a, an electrician doing a little data cable between two points test. Don't mix them up. Here it is. <laughs> the finished Tesla Powell Gen 3. It looks much better, right? This whole job, it does feel like we've polished a turd. Honest review, my honest opinion, it's all right. It's mediocre. Does it compare to a, a lot of the things that are on the market right now? I'm not sure it does. I think in America, this would be awesome, but is it designed for the European market with the little quirks, the cables we use, all that kind of thing? I'm not sure that it is. Build quality of this, amazing, right? Really nice, software, lovely. But don't hide behind the reputation. I think you need to tweak a few bits to make this perfect for the UK market. And I look forward to seeing that on the Gen 4. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.